I think inner peace is something that we're all looking for. On today's show, we have a very special guest all the way from Hong Kong who's going to help us to understand what inner peace is and how he was able to find it and share it with the world. Hi, this is Joey Buzzertal and welcome to the Secret Men's Business Podcast. On today's show, we're going to be speaking to Dino Hero, who's going to be sharing his insights to inner peace, talking about his book and just telling us about his fabulous life. Dino, how are you? Hello, Joe. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, good day. I to mean, you. we've been we've been trying for a while, haven't we? So we here we are. And yeah. you're in Hong Kong in lockdown. How has that been? Oh, it's been, well, it's 21 days over here in, in Hong Kong. I oh, wow. Really seriously. And um, yeah, well, well, since I've come in, I'm a really man of uh, routine as well. So I like uh, keeping my routine as much as I can. Uh, so I still get up at four in the morning, start meditating for an hour, uh, then get some physical exercise going, get the endorphins running. And um, yeah, I've been able to do that in, in, um, in the hotel, which is great. I've been, yeah. Those two are the most important ways I start my days. And yeah. uh, they just set my day really right. And it, it, it gives a good mood, good endorphins. And what more can you ask for? Yeah. So I just feel that, um, yeah, I mean, I've got to adjust my training style. And obviously that, that but as long as you can keep yeah, uh, yourself active, if you've got things to do, get creative, um, it's a beautiful opportunity for that. Mm. And, and it's funny, isn't it? I think lockdown and COVID is now becoming a way of life. So today we're going to be talking about inner peace. And you're like a special guru in this area. So I guess um, before we start, because a lot of people, I did this, a lot of people would see your photo and go, oh, who is that muscle man? And then you've got this guru, you've got this sort of spiritual side as well. So do you want to share with the listeners a little bit about you? Like what is, who is, who is Dino? In sure, a, in yeah, a nutshell. <laughs> of course, of course. I, I was born and raised in Hong Kong. Um, I guess from a really young age, uh, my parents put me through an international school here in Hong Kong. So I was quite familiar with cultures, quite familiar with different people from all over the world. We had um, all different races. And I think that was a really integral uh, part of who I am. It's like being appreciative of whoever I meet. Uh, it's like today I don't look at a person, say, who's um, like Chinese or Western or um, you know, wherever they're from. I don't, I don't even look at that. It's basically who the human being is. Um, is what resonates with me. So, you know, when, when you reached out to me, Joe, to do this podcast, I said, yeah, you're beautiful. I, I love your vibe on these podcasts. So really, thank you uh, no, for thank doing you. that. But I guess, like, for me, so coming to Australia when I was 16, uh, you're leaving my family and everything behind and starting a new life, pretty much, uh, in university. Uh, after finishing university, I just loved Perth. Uh, Perth, just the people, the atmosphere, the culture, the vibe was just what I what I really admired, what I really loved. So I um, ended up staying in Perth for 20 years and uh, worked my way into the mining industry, um, worked as a dump truck operator, got promoted within six months to be uh, a mine controller. So not the mine as in what we all have, but actually <laughs> mine site. So yeah. It was, um, <laughs> yeah. So it was great. It was like bringing out the communicative side to me. But in the mines, as, as you probably know, it's a very manly culture. It's a very culture based on, oh, we're all um, you know, men here. We drink, we party. We, we also you know, work hard, obviously, as well. And um, it was at that stage when, I guess, uh, in, in mining, when uh, you know, it gave me everything. It gave me uh, beautiful house properties uh, that I got set up with financially. It gave me a beautiful car, amazing, my dream car. And um, yeah, but there was something always missing. I always thought like there's something uh, more that life life has to give me. It's not I'm not getting much satisfaction. I mean, you get a really nice car after about two months, you're bored of it. You, you want something else. And so it was always this expectation I had that oh, there's something more to life. There's something more, um, you know, that you can do as a purpose. And um, I didn't I didn't find this purpose out till I went through depression myself. And, uh, it was after... so can I ask you before you go on, like, because yeah. I've spoken to other people in the mines, were you like fly in, fly out? Was it like long, those sort of fly in times? And, you know, because, you, you know, so do you feel like the depression was the depression at the mines? Is that where you got it? Yeah, well, um, it, it was a bit of everything at the moment. And uh, at that moment, anyway. Yeah, but yeah, I was I was doing the fly in, fly out. I was probably one of the really lucky ones that had like week on, week off. It wasn't actually, you know, some of the ridiculous ones, like four weeks on, one week off, that some people were doing with families, with uh, mm -hmm. loved ones behind. 
Uh, so it takes a lot, a lot of burden, you know, on your emotions and mental health, as well as, uh, yeah, your physical health as well. So, um, yeah, I just thought, like, I was really lucky to have one week on the spot. And uh, what I saw in people who've been there for, you know, all their life, pretty much, like 50, I've had people who were, who were in their 50s and still driving, uh, operating, like, uh, trucks. And I'm like, oh, don't you get bored? Like, is there something else that we could, we could actually do? And that's where... I guess um, the communication is really important, like with your family or with your loved ones. Even if you're working those long hours, um, you've got to have some time to yourself because um, everything was really external at that point in my life. Like I was focused on so much on the external world um, that, yeah, I guess depression really crept in. And then I didn't know what actually depression was because I was, I was really you know, uh, happy-go-lucky, positive usually. Uh, but I guess when when the depression actually came, I was like, wow, what hit me? It was after the relation, like a few months after the breakdown. And I was like, oh, I need, um, yeah, I don't know what's happening. Uh, but I guess at that point, when you think that nothing is going to happen, or you're being really fearful or you're being hopeless, I think that moment really defines you. That moment brings your purpose. If you can mm. see the light at the end of the tunnel and know that it's all happening for a purpose. And today, I just think that out of depression is actually a blessing. Yes, yeah. but it's, yeah, it's funny how it's not everyone sees it that way because not everyone gets the the message. And then yeah. you know, so for you, you got it straight away. So yeah. do you mind? Like, is that how you you know? Because in your book, you talk about transformation. So yeah. I guess you want to plug your book and sort of tell us: is this how? How did you then from that moment discover what inner peace was? How did you go from depression to purpose to transforming into this inner peace space? Yeah, well, it all started with this um, powerful, vivid dream. I don't, it was like this night, I was just contemplating everything, questioning everything, and I was like, you know, I don't know if, if I can see any hope. I don't see any um, you know, things going to where it's like going more positive. Uh, so I think it, it was all just questions, questions here and there. And um, yeah, and then that night, I had like a really vivid dream. It was like a dream of um, Lord, Lord Shiva, uh, the Indian god who is who is actually known as the destroyer of evil. So um, his, his form in that dream came to me when he was meditating. So when I woke up, I had tears flowing. I don't know what what happened. I wasn't really very religious before that. Uh, I just thought religion was you know something that makes you happy, and it is. It is something that it's basically a, you know, it doesn't matter if you believe in Jesus, Buddha, or or Shiva. It's actually a true representation of who we are. Uh, in essence. Um, well, that's what religion is to me. But um, yeah, and then after that, I, I sort of got the message that, wow, maybe I need to start meditating. I need to start meditating to, because I used to meditate as a child as well, um, when I was eight years old till I was 13, and then um, left it because it wasn't really cool. Uh, you know, the teenage life in high school, you don't want to be popular. You don't want to uh, indulge in too much um, weird stuff. At the time, it was, it was it looked at as a weird stuff. And today, it's basically my savior. Um, so if it wasn't for meditation, I don't know if I would be even talking to you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah so I just feel, yeah, yeah. from that, yeah, at that moment. No, and, I, and I was going to say as well, like, you know, it's interesting that you said that about when you were a teenager, because yeah. back then, it probably wasn't popular because it wasn't popular. Correct. Yeah. You're absolutely right. <laughs> you know, and now it's become popular. So yeah. can I go back, go back to something that you said? Hold on. I'm just going to get rid of this, okay? Sure. And I'll edit it. Okay. Yeah. Now, I, I want to go back to what you said about Hong Kong, right? Because I think this is a very important thing that I think will help people. Like, yeah. what do you think were the factors that helped you to not see color or race? Was it the fact that you were exposed to those, those uh, different races at school? Or was it more because of the way you were brought up? A bit of everything, but I, I'd say the main thing is, uh, yeah, well, when I went to school, I sort of learned what different cultures were about and learned to appreciate them for, yeah. for what they are. And yeah. I think today, we, with meditation in my life, it becomes the meditator becomes more compassionate. Uh, yeah. More compassionate. Well, I was going to say, I think that that understanding of not seeing anything but people and then going through your depression is and coming together obviously has given you like, a, I'm going to call it a superpower, right? It's given you something to be able to elevate yourself. So, uh, and I love that, right? Because not everyone has that you know, ability. And so your your gift is now, t is a way of teaching others. So I want to just ask, in your experience, what do you think is the main reason why men don't take the calling? You know, like, why do you think they, 
like you know there's a lot so many men that get depressed like you did but they don't take the calling of transformation instead they stay in, in pain and suffering what do you think that's what causes that you think i think the main reason is the image um cuz you like say to first say we take bodybuilding uh, or you know something something more extreme like that then uh, where it's very external it's very um external based and so everything revolves and it, which is all great but it's got to have some sort of purpose i mean i'm not saying bodybuilding is is uh, looked at as completely macho because the ones who train the ones who actually go to the gym and put in that hard effort and nutrition uh they know it's all about internal as well they know about mm-hmm. transformations it's all it starts with internal um but when you're on that stage it's just basically what's external that that counts and i think that's what really drives us at the moment which especially with social media as well when um you know like say a teenager looks at another uh high school student uh you know posing in such a great way it's all external like um i don't know if many people read captions at all but i think um you know there's some points where uh the image doesn't really match the caption as you can yeah. tell it's just so i mean i, 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 mean, I was going to i was going to add to that like i was thinking about this exactly yeah. last night like cuz i don't yeah. want to sound like i'm judging but you know i'm going to now yeah. that we've talked yeah. about it like i've i started noticing there's so many men right that are on instagram that are using their body to i guess be the product and they're trying to make money which is fine cuz it's available but yeah. i just started to think to myself what is going to be the detriment of this right exactly. what is going to come from this and i guess it's a connection to what you just said is that it seems to be it's so external that you know people are posing in their underwear topless and there seems to be a lot of them doing it and they've got millions of followers and i get so yeah. sort of like i question and go oh my god they've got a platform of a million people or so and they could use it in a way yeah. to pass a message on but all they're doing is posing and again i don't yeah. want to sound yeah. like i'm i'm judging anyone listening it's just no, it's just right. an interesting concept what's your view on that like what do you think is going on there for the way that men can are not you know they're not utilizing what they can do um in the spiritual awakening that we're having instead i feel like i don't know it could be wrong i feel like that could easily pull them away from it yeah that you're exactly right joe because um i guess when when uh you know we put up uh photos of us topless and and all that if, if that's basically what your message is uh then really it's it's going to there's going to be a point when you don't get as many likes so you don't get as many followers or as many comments then what's going to happen your mental health is going to probably suffer and you're going to be based on other people's uh, validation or other people's judgment on how you feel and that is completely not right because it should mm. actually it doesn't matter how many followers you have i mean Jesus only had 12 and Hitler had millions right so <laughs> yeah um, I, I, so do, do you think yeah. as a in a to find in a peace is it possible to do both like in your yeah. you know in yeah. your book and all that like do you i'm getting that you know black and white and saying don't do this do this you know it's more yeah. about what how, what's the key i guess to do the things you want to do without going um becoming narcissistic or becoming you know too ego driven like you know do you think that you can be a spiritual person and also be an influencer or do you think that you can be you know um a single highly sex man and also be grounded and be living through values i'm just wondering what your views on that to have in a peace and have a, a constructive life oh you definitely can have a balance you can have a good balance because i know the feeling of you know going to the gym and after you work out basically you have those endorphins you you get more creative as well because it's something about endorphins that strikes the creativity in a person as well you just want to do a post where you know you look great as well that that's completely fine um but i guess that that the what are your core values out of that um you know your core values should be yep i exercise for my mental health i i uh, meditate because it gives me inner peace um so having having your core values not changing because of the circumstance or right i think we'll we'll see you actually in a better uh, better space a uh, better space for to um you know interact with other people as well as like your relationships because i i find that the more i meditate um you know the more i wasn't actually bottling up how i was feeling the emotions especially and um just being able to express myself in a big big way is a good shift for you know the image of actually what it what it is to be a man yeah so i find a man or a woman we both have feminine and masculine sides to us and we've got to embrace those 
um, fully because I find the more men that meditate, the more softer we become emotionally towards yeah. women. There's well, meditation is meditation is much more of a feminine energy anyway because it's all about intimacy exactly. and connection. Yeah. And it's again, it's interesting how um, people don't understand the, the terminology. I think you know that's some a big thing that we have to get right. Like you know, people don't understand. Yeah. Like even I, I thought that you know, if you're spiritual, when I first started, that you have to be a particular way. And I remember going and buying all these posters, yeah. and I'm going, "What am I doing? Like this is not. I'm not into this stuff. I can still yeah. be spiritual and be me." Um, can you? Yeah. Can you? I know this is probably a really, a really straight, simple question, but can you explain what inner peace is? Like again, talking about definitions, what defines inner peace yeah. that people know? Basically, inner peace isn't all about being, you know, I guess, calm or, or expecting everything to be really serene because life isn't like that. Sometimes you're going to be in situations where people will want a reaction or they probe you for a reaction. I can give you an example for, say, married at first sight, there's a dinner party where it just gets loose. Like there's wine throwing on people, there's like people chaotic shouting. And if it was me probably four years ago, five years ago, I probably would have tried to flip the table because I had really, a, I had a really short temper. I had really anger management issues. You probably wouldn't think it now, but I, I did have anger management issues. And um, I just felt like if, it, um, thank goodness I had meditation going into your program to marry you. Yeah, I was going to, I was seeing you spoiling it for everyone. I was going to tell everyone in the next question, <laughs> but you know, so, so for oh, everyone to know, all our listeners, Dino was a married at first sight. So we're going to actually ask him more questions about that after he answers this inner peace question. <laughs> um, yeah. So, so, yeah. So, yeah. So you had anger issues. So for you, how do you define inner peace if it's not about calm? Is it? Do you think it's about acceptance? Uh, it's about acceptance as well as being calm in chaos. So say the dinner party was just chaotic. If I would have reacted or, or got like angry, it would have made really great TV. But uh, for my inner peace, that wouldn't be existing. So I just find having inner peace is that when you can go into chaotic situations, not lose your cool, still be calm in your tone of voice, in your body language, and just be there at, at the moment. Because uh, I guess like coming to ancient times as well, uh, we've had this thing called amygdala in our mind. And it's always about fighting or flight. Um, so it's about the fight and flight. So when, when people do get fearful or they feel like they're getting provoked, they would either fight the person or they would actually run away. Mm. So that's how we deal with fear. In, even in ancient times, like since the caveman um, had been living, like, you know, then you'd either hunt or be hunted. Yeah, it's all about survival, so. isn't it? That survival yeah, mechanism. Survival. Yeah, yeah. So what meditation so, actually does, it, it um, appreciates that inner peace. It actually gives you that inner peace that you don't have to have this fight or flight response. You can just be there in the moment, enjoy the moment. Even if it's chaotic, yes. that's what life is. Life I is love that. It's yeah. Because then you can take yeah. that experience of the meditation and you can use it in everyday life and you can just find that neutral place, right? So, people, so do you think meditation is the only way to find it? So for the people that are listening that are sort of starting out and they are, you know, they've just heard your yeah. definition, what would be a simple way to start to, to learn to connect with it? Is it through meditation or are there other things you can do? Yeah, oh, there's, there's so many other things. The, the basic uh, fundamental foundation, I, I, I was uh, teaching this in prison as well, in a maximum security prison in WA. And uh, what I did with those um, group of men was basically focus on the way they're breathing. So the quality of their breath. Because when I say meditation, people will probably think, oh, I can't sit still. My thoughts, I've got a thousand thoughts in a, in a moment. How am I going to sit still? Um, so it's not about that. You can actually do walking meditation, just getting connected to your breath. So as long as you're breathing deep, conscious breathing, and there's so many different breathing practices that help your mental well-being, you help your immune system, and just helps your mood overall. And you should have been there in, the, in prison. We were actually doing dance meditation, which was amazing. Wow. I mean, when do you get a group of men just, you know, closing their eyes, there's no judgment, and you're just moving to the sway of the music. And there's like these techniques I learned um, in, the, in India, in Himalayas, and I was going through my journey. And this is pulling out certain techniques out of the 112 I've learned. This is pulling out certain techniques that would match the common man. And, and that's where I um, you know, came up with the modern yogi, which is like combining the ancient wisdom with the modern days of living. I love that. Yeah, I like that. I like, I like the way that your transformation 
opened up doors for you. You know, so you were you. you were a minor, and then you got depressed, and then the door opened, and you walked through. That's what I was talking about earlier. Is that people can reach their calling sooner than the, taking the long way, and you reached it, and you took it, and you're here now. So you know, you brought it up. Yeah. So let's talk about maps. You know what? What sure. was what was, <laughs> sure. what was what was the the reasoning for you to go on it? And I guess we've had some people. We've had another guest on the show that was on it just in the last season. And oh, Mikey, yeah, Mikey was on it, and he was yeah. saying some of the downsides of being on it with was misrepresentation and and so on. So for you, tell us why you went on it, and also what what has it been like? What it's like after when you know when you go go onto social media and you get all people. I guess people give you their opinions, and some of those opinions might not be good. Yeah. So how did you cope with that? Uh, you know, I, I welcome it all. I, I just embrace it all because I, I find that um, the, the reason why I applied was, you know, I was single at the time and I was in mining and I wasn't really, uh, you know, I wanted to do something totally different, uh, totally out of, you know, completely shake my system up because I was like so used to everything. I was getting bored from this time. And I thought, you know, I'm single and this whole ad pops up on night shift of my previous employers and listening, but I came up on night shift, um, you know, married at first sight, apply now. And I went for it. I just applied. But within like two pages, it was like 43 pages, something ridiculous. And I was like, 43? I can't spend... Yeah, something like that. It was like really long. Uh, the whole application thing goes into your childhood and um, everything. And, and I was just like, wow. Um, so I left it halfway. And then there was this casting assistant that messaged me on Facebook. So it was this application that was 43 pages. And I was like, I gave up probably on page two. And um, yeah, then I, I just said, no, it's just way too intense. It's way too long. And um, yeah, then two, a week later, I get a message from this casting assistant saying, oh, have you thought of applying on this show? You'd be really good at it. And I took it as a sign. Okay, well, maybe this is meant to be, but I'm not filling out 43 pages. They just sent me a few page documents and they were like, oh, just fill this in and we'll try and see what we can do. I was told there were probably 8,000, 10,000 people that applied. And um, I was like, I was a good, I was getting learning into manifestation back then. So I'm like, let me just manifest this opportunity. Let's see if it works. <laughs> so each morning, each night, I'd be meditating, just sort of visualizing the concept of getting married and um, you know, just getting married. And, and that's a, just that feeling of, of being with someone who uh, you know, you ideally you want, you want to be matched with. Um, but I guess like I didn't spend too much time visualizing who the wife was going to be. I visualized just getting married. And so that manifested, but I didn't get, um, you know, I guess, like, the, uh, the match, the match. That I wanted. Or something. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that, do, you, do you believe yeah. after your experience that that was the show is designed to actually match people up? Or do you think that it's designed for, for ratings and television? I think it's, it's a bit of a mix, because uh, if we look at, say, Jules and Cam, I feel so happy. Like they've, they've found love, like they've matched right from the get go. But, you know, people can sit there and say, oh, they were matched correctly, but they actually made it work as well. Like, I bet they've got challenges as well. But look at them today. They've got a child, they're married. It's beautiful. Like, I, I can't help but feel happy. There's a lot of people that are throwing judgments for them, but I just feel it's, it's about being happy as well. Mm. Uh, just because you didn't get a happy ending doesn't mean you have to send grudges on, person, on people that do. Um, so, but I, I find the ratings bit, I mean, obviously my match was completely different to what I asked and what I wanted in my values and so forth, but that's okay. That, that's life sometimes, you know, you get, um, you know, uh, joy one day, but you get sadness the other. It's about accepting all of them because each mm. of them carry a message. Yeah. Each of them carry but You know, you know what's interesting? I'm wondering if you get, if you get the application form and you filled in everything opposite, if you would find your match. <laughs> You know what I mean? Because you said that they did, it was 43 pages long and they didn't match you. Yeah. You're thinking, okay, they're doing it for a TV thing. So let's put down all, we should just test that, shouldn't we? Let's put down all the opposite things and see if you end up getting your match. I mean, so it sounds to me that your experience was good. You had a good experience. Yeah, well, um, it wasn't that. I mean, I could sit here and complain about oh, my match with this, usage with this, that this is that. But it's already been done. It's like, what can you take away from that experience that yeah. uh, that really, really mattered to you today? And so today I've got a, got a partner that I've, I've uh, really took away whatever I learned from just watching the other couples as well. Because it, 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 there was a lot of what not to do <laughs> on the show. So I, mm. I, I made sure like I, I uh, took away those learnings. 
relationships and even about myself. They taught me a lot about myself. And um, now you can apply that in your relationship with faith and, um, and you know, blossom. blossom yeah. In your, in your has, it been, has it been beneficial for you being known, like being in your work? Like, you know, because now people know you like as the guru, as the person that does, you know, all these yogi sort of stuff. And like, so has that been, has that been a positive for you? Like using that platform, like we we're talking about before to get people to be enlightened or connect. Yeah, absolutely. It has. I've got some clients at the moment who are in the UK, who just recently played in the UK. So they reached out and they're, we're doing past life regressions and all these sort of sessions. And I thought, like, if it wasn't for maps, I probably wouldn't be doing this. I'd probably still be in the mines, and I'd still probably be working 12-hour shifts and, um, you know, getting the money, but actually not getting the satisfaction or fulfillment. And yeah. um, the biggest fulfillment I have is, like, seeing a really stressful client, um, you're sitting with them, and then seeing them wake up to, like, a smiling face, and <laughs> seeing them wake up in such peaceful state of mind, um, mm. like, you, you know you've made a difference, and you know you've actually, you know, been fulfilled. So I think if it wasn't for maths, the exposure and, and whatnot, I think, yeah, I wouldn't, wouldn't be doing that education because mm. I, I went into the show, um, I guess this is the part of editing as well. So I went into the show as a minor and, and all I said in the audition was like, oh yeah, I've got a hobby for meditation. Um, I like uh, you know, meditating, that's part of me. And they were like, wow, okay. So their eyes lit up and they were like, tell us more. Like, wh when do you meditate and what do you do? So then when the edit came, there was no mention of mining. It was all just meditation gurus and to maps and meditation coach and all that. So I'm like, okay, well, I'll just ride with it. Just go with it. Wow. So, so really, they, those producers created your future in a way. In a way, yeah. And, and all, yeah, hats off to them. Like, because I'm today, I can't be any more grateful. I'm just yeah. from Hong Kong. Uh, you know, people in Australia, in England, in yeah, the US as well, in, in Europe as well. I've got Holland. Um, so I've created like this WhatsApp group um, where it's to help people who are overcoming like challenges. So it's like modern yoga, know, global uh, love fam. So it's like where we put up celebrations, like things we're proud of, but also when we're going through stressful times, we come together as a group. And it's just beautiful. I've got people all over the world in this, um, in this group. And it's just really uh, uplifting. You know? Yeah, I'll make sure that yeah. all your links and all your information is at the bottom of this podcast. I mean, you ha you are such a sure. beautiful soul. I just I really enjoy Thank talking you. to you because I can feel your energy from Hong Kong. I can just feel it coming through the screen. Aww. So, Dino, Thanks thank so. you so much. And um, hopefully, maybe we can have you on here again because you have this um, this calming um, nature, but also so much knowledge to share. So, thank you so much. Aww. Thank you, Joe. It's been much, much uh, you know, uh, peace, love, and light to you. It's beautiful talking to you as well. And uh, yeah, we may hope to stay, stay healthy and stay happy. Thanks, buddy. You've been listening to the Thank Secret you. Men's Business Podcast. Now, the, this podcast will be out either on a Monday or a Thursday. So make sure you hit subscribe and like so you get notified of the next coming podcast. Okay, guys, have a great week. Don't forget to be inner peace people. Mm -hmm.